happy holidays, everyone. And for some of you out there, it is Christmas Eve. And for some of you out there, it is one other night of Hanukkah. Or for some of you out there, it's just time to celebrate the holidays. To be with your friends and your family and to eat lavish meals and also to open presents. And it's time for giving and receiving. But mainly, it's time to give out there to someone, whether you know them or whether you don't. Sometimes it's nice to just say Happy Holidays or Merry Christmas or Happy Hanukkah or just be happy that it's this time of year. Well, today on the Vlog of Randomness, I am doing something that's not so random. For many, many years, there has been two things my mother has requested for Christmas from me personally. Number one being a Maxine wall calendar. Now, she gets the death calendar too, but it's also taken care of by another family member every year. She wants the wall calendar from me. The problem is, it's kind of hard to get places. Obviously, you guys know I'm not taking the bus and I don't drive. So, it's kind of hard to be able to go anywhere. Like, if I need to go to Walmart, Mom's going to take me. And it's kind of hard, Mom taking me somewhere to get her Christmas present. So, that being said, she'll still get it. It may just be after Christmas. But that's just a material thing, and that's not something that matters in the long run. Now, granted, it does matter, but... Something else matters oh so much more. Now, in 1987, there was a album that came out called Merry Christmas to You, and it was by Reba McIntyre. Now, if you watched one of the other vlogs of randomness, you would understand about my 15 minutes as a country music star. Not necessarily a superstar, but a country music singer. And you would know that I have visual proof, not photoshopped, that I performed with Reba McIntyre. Well, my mom found a Christmas album, or in this case a cassette, from Reba. And at the end of it, or somewhere in the middle, I don't quite remember, there was a recitation. This recitation was something that I memorized throughout the years. And I have performed for crowds. I performed at Christmas like events when I was growing up. I performed for family members. I performed for friends. I performed in high school, actually, on uh, our um, broadcasting network. And it's something that I've remembered throughout the years. Now, my mom always wanted the calendar, but I'm sure the one thing she really wants is to hear the recitation. So as my gift to you out there on this Christmas Eve, or yet another day of Hanukkah, or just another day, depending on who you are, I wanted to do this recitation for you. Now, you'll notice I'm not looking upwards. Here's a reason for this. The reason for this is because I've had this memorized ever since I first heard it. Now, my memorization skills were always decent, but this is where it really shines. Now, throughout the years, I've grown up, and days turned into years, and you would think I probably would have forgotten a word or two. To this day, I still remember it. So, I give this as my holiday gift to all of you out there. And a special shout to my mother, who has been oh so gracious and been the best mother anyone could ever ask for. Mom, this is for you. Pop viewers, I give you the Christmas guest. It happened one day near December's end when two neighbors called on an old friend. And they found their shop so meager and lean, made gay with a thousand bows of green. And Conrad was sitting with face a shine when he suddenly stopped as he stitched a twine. And he said, young friends, at dawn a day, when the cock was crowing the night away, the Lord appeared in a dream to me and he said, I'm coming your guest to be. So I've been busy with feet of stir and strewing my shop with branches of fir. The table is spread and the kettle is shine. And over the rafters, holly is twine. Now as I wait for my Lord to appear, 
and listen closely so I will hear his step as he nears my humble place, and I open the door and look on his face. So his friends went home and left Conrad alone, for this was the happiest day he had known. For long since his family had passed away, and Conrad spent many a sad Christmas day. But he knew with the Lord as his Christmas guest, this Christmas would be the dearest and best. So he listened with only joy in his heart, and with every sound he would arise with a start, and look for the Lord to be at his door, like the vision he had a few hours before. So he ran to the window after hearing a sound, but all he could see on a snow-covered ground was a shabby beggar whose shoes were torn, and all of his clothes were ragged and worn. But Conrad was touched, and he went to the door, and he said, You know, your feet must be frozen and sore. Well, I have some shoes in my shop for you, and a coat that'll keep you warmer, too. So with grateful heart, the man went away. Yet Conrad noticed the time of day, and wondered what made the Lord so late, and how much longer he'd have to wait. When he heard a knock, he ran to the door, but it was only a stranger once more, a bent old lady with a shawl of black, with a bundle of kindling piled on her back. She asked for only a place to rest, but that was reserved for Conrad's great guest. But her voice seemed to plead, don't send me away. Let me rest for a while on Christmas Day. So old Conrad brewed her a steaming cup and told her to sit at the table and sup. But after she left, he was filled with dismay, for he saw that the hours were slipping away, and the Lord hadn't come as he said he would, and Conrad felt sure he misunderstood. When out of the stillness, he heard a cry, Please help me, and tell me where am I? So again he opened his friendly door, and stood disappointed, as twice before. It was only a child who rendered away, and was lost from her family on Christmas Day. Again, Conrad's heart was heavy and sad, but he knew he should make the little girl glad. So he called her in and wiped her tears, and quieted all her childish fears. Then he led her back to her home once more. But as he entered his own darkened door, he knew the Lord was not coming the day. For the hours of Christmas had passed away. So he went to his room and knelt down to pray, and he said, Dear Lord, why did you delay? What kept you from coming to call on me? For I wanted so much your face to see. Soft in the silence, a voice he heard, Lift up your head, for I kept my word. Three times my shadow crossed your floor. And three times I came to your lonely door. I was the beggar with bruised cold feet, and I was the woman you gave something to eat. I was the child on the homeless street. Three times I knocked, and three times I came in, and each time I found the warmth of a friend. Of all the gifts, love is the best, and I was honored to be your Christmas guest. Happy holidays to everyone out there from myself, from AJ, from Ashley, from all the podcasters, former and current. And thank you out there to all of my friends and ones that have become friends for sharing this wonderful occasion with me. And once again, thank you to my mother for just being the greatest mom anyone could ever ask for. So... I want to thank you guys and girls out there for watching today. If you did like what you see, spread the word about this video. It's something that means a lot to me and means a lot to my mom and means a lot just to everyone out there. If you just need to have a nice little friendly pick-me-up in this sometimes that you understand that sometimes holidays are not the easiest to get through for whatever reason. And we just need to hear a nice little story to make us better again, to let us forget about our trials and tribulations throughout the years. And I wanted to give that to you guys and girls out there today. So whether you're having the greatest day or the worst, I still want to give this gift to you out there. Thank you guys and girls out there for watching. And until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all I got to say about that.